일론 머스크, 제프 베이조스, 우주로 사업 영역을 넓히고 있는 대표적인 기업가들입니다. 이들은 우주의 잠재적 시장 가치와 경제성에 방점을 두고 우주 개발에 뛰어들었는데요. 여기 좀더 숭고한 비전을 가지고 우주 개발에 뛰어든 한 남자가 있습니다. 바로 게임회사 테트리스의 설립자이자 블루 플래닛 파운데이션, 블루 플래닛 얼라이언스의 회장인 헹크 로저스입니다. 헹크는 15년 전 심장마비를 겪으면서 인류의 연약함을 깨달았다고 합니다. 그는 인류를 우주로 이주시키는 것을 목표로 우주 개발에 나섰다고 하는데요. 그가 하와이의 달 화성기지를 설립한 지 8년이 지났습니다. 그동안 어떤 기술적 성과가 있었는지 직접 그를 만나 들어보시죠. So, um, 15 years ago, I had a life-changing experience. I had a heart attack. And uh, I had the chance to re-examine the rest of my life. And I found my missions in life. And one of my missions turned out to be to make a backup of life. I mean, when I say life, I mean all of life, not just human life, but life. Um, as far as we know, we are the only uh, planet or the only place in the universe that has life. We imagine life in many other places. We imagine aliens and we imagine other life, but we have no proof. Mm -hmm. So as far as we know, we are the only life in the universe. And If we uh, look back on the Earth, like from the ISS or astronauts going to the moon, we realize that <clears throat> Earth, the life on Earth is very fragile. It's a very small skin on this rock in space. And if a uh, rock from space came, we could destroy all of life easily. So it's our duty because we have the ability to make a backup of life by going to other planets. And first step to that is to make a, a permanent settlement on the moon and then on Mars, and then to find ways to go to other solar systems by other stars and bring life to those places. Um, I believe that we can have a permanent settlement on the moon by the end of this decade, meaning by 2030. And I believe that we can have the same thing on Mars by about 2040. Well, High Seas, the Hawaii uh, Space Exploration Analog and Simulation is our test facility for testing missions to the Moon and Mars. Mm. What we are working on now, what we've done is we have improved the technology. Our biggest improvement is in, well, the way it works is when you leave High Seas, when you leave the, the, um, the dome, you have to wear a space suit. Mm. And uh, we've been working on the uh, different parts of the spacesuit. For one, um, we have it so that it's air conditioned, so that when we go on an EVA, an extra vehicular activity, I would say the crew don't overheat uh, or that the helmet doesn't fall. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that's one. And then we've been working on the communications. Uh, so that the crew members, when they're um, on their EVA, can easily speak to each other and speak to uh, mission control. And uh, also now we have built-in camera and the head-up display yes. inside the helmet. So uh, the function of the camera is so that mission control can see and record what the crew member is seeing mm -hmm. when they are on an EVA. Um, many of our EVAs go into lava tubes and lava tube, because it's underground, um, makes communication much more difficult. Mm. 
Um, but we like to think that when we send the astronaut to the moon and Mars, every little exploration that they do will be recorded so that it can be analyzed afterwards. Mm -hmm. The inside of the, of the uh, moon base itself, um, we have, yeah, because we are getting, trying to make it more realistic when we when we go back in time, the very first mission we had flushing toilets. Mm. It's obviously not realistic in, in yeah. space. <laughs> so um, we have changed them to composting toilets, um. which basically the crew have to take care of very carefully uh, to maintain them. But they don't have to be. How can I say? They don't have to be cleared every few days. Oh. In the old days, you have to have a truck going up and and taking away the uh, the waste. Yeah. But this is no longer the way it is now. Um, we have plans to build uh, new ones, uh, a new a new dome, um, and we are thinking about uh, construction methodology for the moon. Uh, we're also thinking about. Um, psychology of windows i'd like to try to build a dome without windows and see how that works psychologically mm. uh, many people say we must have windows uh, but windows are a problem for radiation yeah and uh, I, I kind of feel that if you're looking out a window on the moon and nothing ever changes yes it might it might have a reverse effect you know, like, oh my God, I'm in this place and it's so barren and lack of life, lack of motion, lack of anything mm -hmm. that it may have, it may be, um, may be worse than having a, you know. So the idea of, of what I'm thinking for the next generation will be to project windows on the inside of the dome. Mm -hmm. and, the and the projection can be a projection of places on earth. It's energy what is our source for energy um if we try to do um how can i say solar energy mm -hmm. i think that requires a lot of infrastructure um lots of parts lots of moving parts that have to aim at the sun um and then there's the problem of uh dust mm -hmm. on the moon there is lunar dust and any activity on the moon like people walking around or vehicles driving or rockets landing and taking off will cause this dust to rise mm. and because of the low gravity this dust doesn't settle very quickly it takes a long time to settle mm. there are some people who worry that if we push the dust into the into the well there's no atmosphere but if we raise the dust it may not settle for a hundred years or something like that oh. so we won't be able to see the surface of the moon anymore so, I mean, these are all real considerations. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the answer there is some kind of uh, a nuclear power source, mm -hmm. nuclear fusion, if we can invent it, or nuclear fission, if we can do it uh, cleanly. Um, you know, of course, the, the problem with nuclear fission mm -hmm. is that there is a, a treaty that exists that says we shouldn't bring any nuclear uh, materials into space. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this is just a treaty. And we can, uh, if we have a safe way to have a, a nuclear re reactor, like they have on U U US submarines or um, aircraft carriers, that would be a great source for energy. Mm. Um, I think a lot of the things that, that, we, that, that we want, want to, to do, do on the moon require, require a lot of energy. energy. And so we, we need, need that, that source, source of energy, energy and we have the technology. We just are afraid of each other. Yeah. And so we are not using this technology, but I think we can overcome that. Well, first of all, water, uh, water, once you have water on the moon, you keep it. Mm. <laughs> don't, don't, don't let it escape. We on the ISS, we reuse all of the water oh. that's on the ISS. So there is no loss of water. Mm -hmm. The only way you lose water is if you throw it out for some reason, mm -hmm. which makes no sense. Mm -hmm. We should use reverse osmosis or whatever and clean and get all the water back. 
this is a well-developed technology already mm -hmm. uh, on Earth. Food is a little bit more complicated. Um, one of my researchers spent six months in the Biosphere 2, which is an experiment where they created a sealed environment and eight people stayed inside the sealed environment and grew their own food. Mm. And the, the result of this experiment was eight people spent all their time growing food and they were always hungry. Aww. So um, growing food on a small scale by, by using human labor, it's too labor intensive. Yeah. So when we go to the moon or Mars, we can't just spend all of our time growing food. <laughs> we have to do other things. Yeah. And, and so what we have to do here on Earth in the next 10 years is to develop robotic food growing techniques mm. so that robots grow our food and harvest and do all of that maintenance work um, so that we don't rely on people to do this. This is not, I don't think, so complicated. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the future, we will have urban food growing situations. Um, the reason that many places in the world doesn't grow food is because labor and energy is too expensive. Mm -hmm. And so it's, if that's the case, we will develop technology that will enable us to grow food. Um, and then we can have, it takes space, by the way, it takes oh, a lot okay. of space to grow food. So we need to get over the, the, the concept that we need space and also we need to have energy. I mean, that's the light and the water we can recirculate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have no idea mm -hmm. about what's really going on in the moon and Mars. We're only like just barely scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that there are things that we are going to find on the moon that don't exist on earth. Mm -hmm. and crystals for example because there there is no crystal on earth which is created in a vacuum mm -hmm. and the moon is a vacuum and all, also there is log one six gravity so and the, and the absence of of water for example these are all things that exist on the moon that don't exist here mm -hmm. so i think we will find minerals that are very useful to us mm -hmm. and so i think um, that just the mining aspect alone will, uh, how can I say, become a booming business. Mm. But then if you, it, all of the activities that we haven't thought of yet that are going to happen on the moon are huge economic opportunities. When Europe finally discovered, even though they didn't discover it, mm -hmm. they went to the new world. Uh, it was an economic boom for, for Europe. Yeah. And the moon is the next new world. There's a whole world. The surface of the moon is the size of the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Just think of everything that we can find and do on the moon mm -hmm. once we are there. So this is going to be a huge economic boom for the entire planet. Right, so, um, so the, the place that I know uh, something that you're working on is um, vacuum, dirty vacuum. Uh, so mo we must study vacuum, which mm -hmm. is the absence of atmosphere, um, to create equipment that will work in this situation. But on the moon, in addition to it being vacuum, it's dirty. And it's because the moon dust will rise up very quickly and get inside of your equipment. And so you need to be able to test equipment in a dirty vacuum. Mm -hmm. And um, I think recently, um, Taisik um, announced or Korea announced that you have completed the work on a dirty vacuum. Oh. So this vacuum is big enough to contain robots or rovers or whatever and they can be tested under those conditions so mm -hmm. i think that is a that's a huge useful piece of equipment mm -hmm. um, i am not an engineer myself so i'm how can i say i'm just getting started in this industry yeah so to speak 
Um, I'm mostly on the vision side or the entrepreneur side. I want to get something done. Um, so I will depend on uh, Korea for lots of interesting technology going forward.